One of the cancers that you talk about in the Dog Cancer Survival Guide are nasal cancers. Uh, Dr. Dresser, I'll throw this question out to you first. If your dog has cancer of the nose, what are the likely signs and symptoms that you might be looking at? Nasal cancers are tricky, and the reason why they're tricky is because of the fact that they grow within the nasal sinuses. And we can't see into the nasal sinuses with our naked eyes uh, as guardians uh, or as veterinarians for that matter. And so many times we have to rely on things progressing to the extent that we see signs from the outside of the dog's body or the dog's doing something different uh, that wouldn't normally be, be witnessed. Uh, some examples would be a discharge uh, that is uh, some uh, material, green, yellow, or occasionally bloody or mucusy coming out of uh, one of the nostrils. Sometimes we'll see a bit of a swelling uh, in the area of the muzzle. Uh, either, strangely, sometimes it's even a cavity, so a depression in the area of the muzzle. And very, very rarely I've seen nasal cancers show uh, as, as dogs having some gagging or some swallowing or some peculiar coughing noises or something like that. And these are most commonly occurring when the nasal tumors are further back in the nasal sinus. And Dr. Edinger, what are your thoughts on this type of cancer? This is, uh, you know, in some ways similar to bladder cancer in dogs in that a lot of patients have a secondary infection on top of the cancer, which is a little bit confusing for the guardian and sometimes the veterinarian because they start them on antibiotics and the symptoms, the discharge improves. And so you think it's just an infection, but in general, you know, there's the possibility that there's an underlying cancer in the nasal and the sinus cavities. So that can be a little bit confusing. And so I think it's one of those, um, if that's going on with your dog, you want to, you know, really consider pursuing advanced diagnostics and often you'll need a nasal biopsy and in best case scenario, the better way to diagnose this is with a CT scan and rhinoscopy, which is a scoping procedure where they're going to get a biopsy. But that's really going to give you the complete picture about the extent of the disease and the type of nasal cancer that your dog has. Dr. Dressler, your thoughts on treatment options for nasal cancer? Well, treatment options, we, as usual, have a lot of different things to choose from. Uh, nasal cancers can be a little bit frustrating in some cases. It's difficult to achieve a cure. Radiation is one of the central ways that nasal cancers are treated, and radiation therapy many times does a lot of good with respect to improving life quality and also longevity. Uh, surgery in some cases can be tough uh, because the surgery that's needed many times would be so extensive, uh, not every time, but many, many times so extensive uh, that it's just not possible. We've also got to remember that changing uh, the diet uh, can be an important uh, additional help uh, to fighting cancer uh, for a canine patient. Uh, the addition of supplements can be very useful, including those that turn on cell suicide and cancer cells. Those are called apotogens. Uh, and of course, uh, life quality enrichment uh, with deliberately improving things that are the joys in life for our patients. And uh, we, of course, can't forget uh, pain control when appropriate. There's a lot of information if your dog like has... An... Add, can I add something? Please, please. So I think in terms of conventional treatment option, as Dr. Dressler mentioned, surgery itself is not doesn't really achieve wide clean margins. It's very hard to remove the entire entire tumor from the nasal cavity, and radiation is really the main conventional treatment. Most nasal cancers tend to stay local in the nasal and sinus cavity, so they have a low spread rate. And there's a, two main types of radiation out there. One is conventional radiation, and then there's a few places in the country, including the hospital that I work at in New York, that has a type of radiation called radiosurgery. And nasal cancers are the second most common cancer that we treat with radiosurgery with our CyberKnife unit. And it allows the nasal cancer to be treated instead of 15 to 20 treatments in three treatments, which is less trips to the hospital, less anesthesia for your pets, and actually less side effects with very comparable um, treatment efficacy. So again, this is an evolving field. There are some newer treatment options out there and you know, definitely some, some new, new things to learn about. Well, and if you're looking at CyberKnife, I, we have a video in this series specifically about that uh, procedure. A very interesting one and lots of information in the book, both about that and all the options available to you if your dog has uh, tumors in the nasal region. 
more information in the book. But for now, I want to thank you both for joining us, Dr. Attinger in New York, Dr. Dressler in Hawaii. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.